Hello everyone, this is a short and concise video that I have made to learn correctly how to prepare a tooth for a crown. So let's begin. The first thing to do is start with the occlusal reduction. I've used a tapered round TR13 burr for this. You can start with making depth orientation grooves on the occlusal surface where basically all you have to do is sink the burr in completely on three different points. One, the mesiobuccal cusp bridge. Two, the buccal or the lingual groove in the center. 3. The distobuccal cusp bridge. Make sure that the burr is oriented along the original incline of the tooth while doing this. The same is followed on the lingual occlusal surface as well. You will then make the grooves for the functional cusp bevel. Angle your burr almost 45 degrees to the buccal occlusal surface or the line angle and sink the burr in the same three points. Grooves are basically created to serve as a reference for the amount of reduction we need. Obviously, the reduction varies from crown to crown. This video represents a preparation for a metal-free crown like a zirconia or a glass ceramic crown. Once the grooves are created, with these grooves as your reference and following the original tooth inclines, you will now reduce the entire occlusal surface. Go from the central groove that you've created to the cusp bridge and extend it to the proximal end. Start first with the buccal part. Make sure you follow the original tooth inclines at all times like shown in the video. This enhances the retention and the resistance form, preventing any dislodgement of the crown. Next, join the grooves to create the functional cusp bevel. Keep the burr at 45 degrees to the bucco occlusal line angle and run your burr from mesial to distal throughout the surface. To know why we are creating the functional cusp bevel and what the purpose of it is, please watch the video on the clinical tips that I had uploaded earlier. You can follow the link in the description box below. Once your buccal surface is completely done, you can move on to the lingual surface. Here also you will follow the same thing that is from the central groove you move to the cusp bridge and from the cusp bridge you extend it to the proximal end. All you have to do is follow the tooth inclines and you will maintain the anatomy of the tooth. For a ceramic crown you need at least 1.2 to 1.5 mm reduction on the occlusal surface, 0.5 mm extra on the functional cusp bevel. The axial walls should be reduced to a depth of 1.2 to 1.5 mm, similar to the amount of occlusal reduction that we are doing. Remember, this is for a monolithic crown, okay? Not for a layered one because that will require definitely more preparation. The margin depth should be 0.8 to 1 mm circumferentially. We've used a tapered round burr for creating the margins. Next, we move on to the buccal surface. Now, as you can see, the buccal surface has two planes. One is in the cervical plane and the other one in the middle third or the occlusal plane. So, you can do your preparation by following these two planes. We will see how. Here also, I am using the same burr that is the TR13 tapered round burr. First, I start by creating the grooves on the buccal surface, keeping the burr parallel to the cervical part of the tooth. So again, three grooves are created on the buccal surface as shown in the video. Once the grooves are created, join the grooves together. Keep the burr parallel to the cervical surface at all times and follow the gingival contour while preparing. Make sure that you do not tilt the burr towards the tooth. If you keep the burr straight and parallel to the cervical part only, your gingival margin will also be created as we can see here in the video. The details of the burrs that I have used are mentioned in the description box below so you can go through that and I would advise you to go through two videos that I had uploaded earlier. One is a video on burrs that are needed for tooth preparation and the second one is the clinical tips for tooth preparation. The link is in the description box below. These videos will help you understand the entire process of tooth preparation easily. If you have any doubts, don't forget to mention them in the comment section below or you could just reach out to me personally through the email address that I have mentioned here.
After you are done with the cervical part on the buccal surface, you can then go to the middle third of the tooth surface. Slightly tilt your burr and run it across the surface from mesial to distal. This is your two plane reduction. It gives you adequate amount of reduction for your crown basically. We are trying to maintain the original tooth contour here and minimizing any error for over reduction by doing this. You can appreciate the two-plane reduction in this image. Once we are done with the buccal surface, I move on to the proximal surfaces with a needle point burr, keeping it straight and parallel to the proximal surface above the interdental papilla. I will saw through the proximal surface, and a small fin of enamel is formed. The same is repeated on the other side. And then the enamel fin is broken with a probe or any instrument that you can find. I have used the same burr to flick off that enamel fin. Right now our goal is not to create a margin but just to break the contacts without damaging the adjacent tooth. Once that is done, we take our initial burr that is a TR13 and run it along the proximal surface. This will ensure adequate reduction. Since we are using a tapered round burr, it will also give the required amount of taper that we need for a crown. Make sure that you maintain continuity between the buckle and the proximal surfaces. Tooth preparation is not really that difficult. All you need is a good control over the air rotor so you can practice, practice, practice and improve your skills. When you are preparing a tooth for whichever crown that is, the steps of your preparation will remain the same. The only difference is the amount of reduction and the margin. For that, I would suggest you to watch my previous videos. The link is in the description box below and you will get a clear idea of what I am talking about. Next, we move to the lingual surface. Here you have to follow the same steps that you did on the buccal surface except that this is only a single plane reduction. Make the three grooves, join the grooves keeping the burr parallel to the cervical part of the lingual surface and run it from the mesial to distal surface joining the proximal margin that you have already created. Make sure that you keep the burr straight at all times, straight and parallel to the tooth surface. This way you ensure that there is adequate taper and you do not over reduce the tooth. Make sure that you do not tilt the burr towards the tooth surface or away from the tooth surface. And now we are almost done with the major part of the preparation. If you want to refine your margin, you can use an end cutting burr. I have used EX18 from Money. Smoothen out the irregularities in your margin with this burr. This is an end cutting burr where the diamond particles are only at the tip of the burr. So the rest of your preparation is quite safe. Go through the video that I have put up on burrs that are needed for tooth preparation. I am sure it will help you understand everything better. The last thing to do is smoothen out the entire preparation with a yellow band burr. Make sure that there are no sharp points or irregular surfaces on the prepared tooth. And with this we come to an end. This is how our tooth looks after we are done with our preparation. If you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like, share and subscribe button. Do follow the channel for more interesting videos.